All right, in this lecture, we're going <clears> to <throat> talk about the bass shell. A lot of what's in this lecture is actually applicable to all shells, but the specific commands that are shown in this lecture uh, uh, are known to work with the bass shell. They, because the bass belongs to a larger family of shells, they may additionally work in some other types of shell environments, uh, but they will absolutely work in the bass shell. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit so far uh, about the shell. What you may not know is that there are uh, two main families of shells. Uh, the Born family, uh, which uh, is actually, you know, and, and the absolute file paths to the location of these shells uh, are listed here. They can be found on most Unix machines, uh, uh, most, especially Linux machines, uh, will have many different shell varieties. Uh, the default on a Linux machine is the Bash shell, typically. Um, another popular shell is the, she, the C shell. So uh, of the Born family shells, uh, a lot of the syntax is very similar and the, the C shells are a little bit different. Okay, so obviously, like I said, Bash and C are the most common. Bash <clears throat> is the default on limit, Linux. It is your default shell on Shamu. And if you want to find out what your uh, shell is, you can echo the shell variable, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, of course, we've used some of this. Most, most notably, we've used the uh, asterisk pattern, pattern matching feature, or wildcard, uh, within the Bash shell. And uh, so I list a, a couple of the other pattern matching, or, you know, kind of Bash regular expressions, if you will. They are slightly different than the regular expressions that you use with grep and set and awk. Um, most notably, the, the wildcard uh, behaves differently um, in, in, uh, in Bash. Uh, another different thing that you'll find is that you can, uh, you, you have this command available that says all file names except, uh, and you can list more than one. Uh, so you can negate, so you could say remove, uh, say, you know, file name one, uh, all the files except file name one or file name two, something like that. Uh, so I list some examples. We've already done uh, some pattern matching, so I'm not going to go into the shell and show you these. Uh, for the most part, the, these are basically the same as regular expressions. The main difference, uh, again, is, is with the asterisk. We've already talked a little bit about uh, escaping and, and quoting. So um, whenever you uh, see a, a backslash preceding a meta character, that'll, that'll turn off its special meaning. Uh, you can also do it with a set of quotes. Uh, so, like, if you, if you actually had a file named chap uh, star, which would be an awful thing to name a, a file, but if you had a file and you wanted to remove it, uh, if you didn't quote that, that would it, it would remove, you know, the, the command remove chap would remove, you know, that would remove all files, chap1, chap2, etc. And so that could be dangerous. Um, so if, if there's actually a file with a, you know, called chap star, well then you need to put quotes around it in order to remove that exact file. Uh, you can also use the quotes to, uh, to handle white space. So, you know, I, I don't think it's good policy to put white, white space in file names, but I know Windows users are kind of used to doing that, and so they, when they come to a Unix machine, uh, they tend to do it. And, and the easiest way then to, uh, to handle that is to put it in quotes. Okay, so something we haven't talked about is, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about piping, you know, the output of one command into another, uh, but there's another way to join two commands together, and that's uh, with these um, back, uh, you know, single back quotes. Uh, so the, the type setting here in LaTeX doesn't kind of show up the way it, it does in the Bash shell, but it should look something like that. Uh, so I'll go over to the shell and give you an example of that. So we know uh, the command echo just echoes back to the screen, so if we just say echo, of course, hello, okay? So we could also say echo, which is a command, uh, the, the date is, and then the single back quote, date. So there we've joined two commands, so now you see it echoes, the date is. Uh, to give you another example, the computer has been on You know, so the computer has been on, you know, whatever, 53 days with 24 users, and et cetera. <clears throat> so that's another way 
to uh, combine commands in, in the bash shell. Uh, we talked a little bit about shell variables. You know, we, and if ever we use uh, some definition more than once, it's a good idea to assign a variable to it, uh, or assign its value to a variable, rather. And then we can use this uh, through, uh, let's just give you an example. Uh, a nice w way, you know, to do this would be the one I gave there. So if we had a, if we had a file extension, uh, and that was say dot avi, and then we also had a movie name that was called my movie. Um, we can assign them to a new variable using uh, the dollar sign. So we say movie name name extension. So this will do, um, and then if we echo file. We can see that when they're joined together. So the, the dollar sign is how you access variables, and you can combine two variables by just simply putting them together like that. OK, so let's talk about shell scripting. Uh, so far, you know, we haven't really done any scripting because uh, we didn't know how to use a proper editor. Now, now, of course, we know how to use a proper editor. So we can create files called, you know, shell scripts, and uh, we basically put a collection of these scripts, you know, a collection of uh, Unix commands into a file, and then we can run that file, uh, you know, and it'll execute the commands in sequence. Okay. We typically use a, a, a .sh uh, extension just by convention, but you can call it anything. It doesn't even have to have a file extension at all. Uh, of course, since we're making this uh, script into something that we need to execute, we have to change the permissions of it uh, to be an executable file. So, uh, you know, I, I think if, if we just, uh, since we now have an editor available to us, uh, what I'll go ahead and do is just open up, uh, you know, a new file. I'll call it myscript.sh, and um, we'll go ahead and put, put some commands in it. So. Uh, We'll say uh, directory equals print working directory. So I'm, I'm uh, adding a command here, and then we can uh, echo the date. Today is date. And then we can also echo the current directory is. And then we're going to access the directory, we, the variable that we assigned up there. So there's my script. Uh, if we look at the permissions of my script, uh, we know it's it's not executable by default. So we need to to make it uh, an executable file. We chmod all plus execute my script, and then we can run it. And there you see. Not sure what the uh, let's see. I must have made a mistake. Oh, there should not be any spaces here. Okay, so now if we run my script, uh, there we get the right answer. Okay, so that's pretty two pretty simple commands there. Okay, so uh, shell programming, shell scripting, it's not really that much difference. Uh, but uh, a shell program usually has a, a shebang line at the beginning. So it's, it's a line that starts with uh, the hash mark and the exclamation point, and uh, then, then followed by the shell that you want to run. So you can uh, write, sh say, C shells that will run. Uh, you can spawn from a bash environment or vice versa. You can spawn bash shells from a C uh, login shell. Um, you know, typically we, we pick a shell and we use it all the time. And you know, Bash is uh, the default and the mod most modern shell, so that's the one most of us use. So if we write scripts, then we typically, you know, from a Bash shell, we typically just spawn uh, Bash programs. But I uh, just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, so we can uh, make scripts interactive with a with a read command. So here you. You see, I have a, a script uh, that I wrote. We start with a shebang line at the beginning. Uh, the first thing we do is we want to echo the directory needed to be searched. And then it'll pause and read in a variable called dname uh, from standard in, from the input. 
then once we hit enter from the input, it'll ask us the next question, enter the file extension to find, and uh, then it'll pause and, and ask us for uh, an entry there. And then, then it just echoes a message. Uh, so we're going to search for files with extension, file extension, the variable, uh, in directory, directory name. And then we're going to use the find command, which we've been using um, just with, a, you know, with our own script. So uh, we're gonna, it's going to say find directory name will be substituted in there. Then we're going to look for files with file extension. Uh, of type file, and then we're going to direct any, any uh, you know permissions denied errors or whatever to 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 the null standard error to null. So let's go ahead and, and uh, look at this. I already have the the, the file created, so I, I have a, a, a uh, script called my find one. Uh, there it is. So we're viewing it here, in just basically exactly what I have in the slides there. So if we run this, so th the idea here is that if you, you know, find is kind of a clunky command. So if you had some very specific feature that you wanted to find every time, uh, you could create a script like this to help you, you know, to shorten the, the amount of typing you had to do. So if we run this, um, <clears throat> you can see it pauses and it says, you know, enter the directory to be searched. So I'll, I'll enter home FES788. And uh, the file extension to find, we'll look for tech files, uh, and there they are, okay? So that's how that works, and you can see it's a little bit, we created a script that simplified our find command, okay? Of course, uh, you know, inter interactive scripts are, you know, not terrible, well, they are, they are useful, but they're, they're, they're usually uh, better served by adding command line arguments. So instead of pausing and interrupting the script, we'd like to just uh, put the commands or the, what we want to input on the command line, uh, and then we, can go, then we can run the script as if it's a normal Unix command, and we can subject it to you know, piping and, and redirecting and other things, and that makes it a quite, little bit more useful. So there, the, the second example I have there is this, you know, the same idea. We want to search for, a find, we're going to use find to search a directory of a particular file type, but we're going to use command line arguments to run our script uh, this time. So if we go back to the command line, uh, this time we'll look at uh, the file. I have uh, my find two, okay, and there it is, a little simpler. Uh, the dollar signs represent the, the uh, parameter list that will define on the, on the, or the arguments that will define on the command line. So the first argument I give it will go be expand, expanded in dollar sign one, dollar sign two will be the second one. If there was a third one, there'd be a dollar sign three, et cetera. <clears throat> so uh, we can go ahead and the best way to show this is by example. So if we run this, I find uh, two, and this time, the first uh, argument, uh, because I defined it to be this way, is going to be the directory we want to search. So home FES788 will be the directory, and we want to search for files called tech. Um, let's see. Uh, there, there's a mistake there. That, that oh, sorry. The mistake is that this is a uh, my find two dot shell. There we go. So there we, there you can see it. You know, gave the same output, a little bit shorter input, and then the real beauty of this is that we can combine it with our regular pipe command, and say we can grep for slides two, and three. You know. So then there we get, you know, we can combine our, our shell script or shell program with uh, our other, you know, better known Unix commands. So uh, finally, you know, when we're programming, we, we're offered uh, the Bash shell offers us conditionals. So we have if statements uh, that we can combine with and or or, and we can do comparisons. Uh, we have else if and else, and, and, and so there, there's an example down at the bottom. And in this example, I'm oh, sorry, uh, there's a, an example uh, script there. And so in this example, what we're actually going to do is look at the number of command line ar arguments. So this uh, special character there actually gives us the number of command line arg arguments. So if the number of command line arguments is equal to one, um, then we're going to search the current directory, which is uh, also stored in the variable pwd. So in this case, we're going to search the, the, the uh, we're going to look in the current working directory uh, for files of the file extension that we'll give on the command line, okay? However, if uh, there's two arguments given on the command line, 
then the first argument will be taken as the directory and the second argument the file extension and then finally if there you know if there's no arguments given then it's going to give you a, basically print an error okay and, and tell you to specify either one or two arguments so we go over here we can first look at it I've already got this uh, one written as well uh, my find three okay there it is and uh, if we run it we'll, we'll start by running it without any commands okay and it says you know it tells us please specify either one or two inputs so uh, the, the next time we'll, we'll run it we'll actually specify it with one input um, it, it's there's it tells us it gives us a message that it's searching for files with dot tech extension in the current directory um, in this directory there are none so so it doesn't give us you know there's no dot tech files in this in this directory so it doesn't really do anything however then uh, you know finally if we give it three two arguments it'll basically repeat um, the, the way it performed earlier okay and again we can pipe it into grep or something else So uh, th this is just a couple of tables that give you, you know, uh, the numerical comparisons we can use and the string comparisons or string testing we can use within this Bash environment. Uh, I'll leave that to you, you know, to study when you need it as a reference. There's also file attributes, so we can check, you know, if a file exists uh, and it's a regular file, then do something. If the file exists and it's readable, then do something. If it's writable, then do something, et cetera. So there's lots of file attribute testing as well. And finally, uh, you know, there, there are also for and while constructs. So, you know, this is the same. We can do if statements. We can do for and while loops. Uh, we can also do uh, floating point and integer com computation uh, with the additional commands uh, expr uh, and uh, bc. And, you know, then finally I'm just going to say the reason I'm not presenting those here in detail is because, uh, you know, looping and, and uh, you know, actual computation is better left to real programming languages, uh, and you know that that is Python for sure in our case because that's what we're going to be using a lot in this course. So uh, we're going to leave that for uh, basically the next lecture to learn how we might do some of that kind of stuff in Python, and that uh, concludes this uh, this lecture on the Bash shell, Bash programming, scripting, etc.